1998, Monica Lewinsky's life imploded as her fame exploded across the country. You see, 22-year-old Monica Lewinsky was a White House intern for the then 49-year-old president, Bill Clinton. For two years before this, Clinton and Lewinsky had been involved in an affair, meaning that before Monica could legally drink or rent a vehicle, she had been seduced by her boss over twice her age and the most powerful man in the world. How could Monica say no to any improper advance or action? How could she ever get a job with a black mark on her resume from the President of the United States of America? What's more, the overly entitled president was incredibly charismatic and charming to all of us, and even then, 30 years ago, his wife had already been painted by the media as cold and hard and career-driven. With her brain still going through its final stages of development, Monica Lewinsky embarked on an affair which probably felt deliciously scandalous and exciting and intimate in the moment, but which she would later be crucified for on the internet. After the scandal broke, Bill Clinton was impeached, then acquitted, despite lying to the nation and Congress about the affair during the trial proceedings. He was fined $90,000 and banned from practicing law in the state of Arkansas for five years and in front of the Supreme Court. Since then, he's had quite the career comeback, making him the comeback kid one more time than he deserved. He now gets paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for speaking engagements, worked for the UN as an envoy, published very successful books, and somehow was even considered Hillary Clinton, his highly successful, educated, skilled, and experienced wife's best asset when she ran for president in 2008 and 2016. So, of course, since Bill really only got a slap on the wrist for breaking his marital vows, Monica, who had broke no such vows and was not impeached or responsible for putting national security at risk, would also have gotten a simple slap on the wrist and the opportunity to move on in life, right? Wrong. Her face was plastered across newspaper stands, chain emails, and tabloids. Her name was grossly memorialized as a whore in popular music. She couldn't work. She couldn't even grocery shop in peace. She was harassed and bullied for participating in the exact same acts as Bill Clinton, while he carried on, arguably growing in success and power. Somehow she has managed to survive the past 30 years, enduring humiliation I don't think I could possibly withstand. Recently, Monica was able to find her voice and a platform to share her personal perspective on the scandal that ruined her life for many years while barely affecting Clinton's life. You can watch her moving speech through a link in the Lamia Library. Hello! I'm Hannah, the bipolar bisexual host of this bi-weekly podcast of Witches and Women. In this podcast, we explore the lives of fierce women, both historical and mythological, to better understand their lives and impact. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or even YouTube, and if you do social media, you can follow of Witches and Women on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Of course, don't forget about our website, of witchesandwomen.com, where we have a shop full of salty merchandise <laughs> and merchandise descriptions, which might be a little over the top, and the Grimoire Gallery, our internet gallery filled with contemporary art dedicated to our theme this season, Women of Ancient Greek History and Mythology. All of the art in the Grimoire Gallery is created by current working artists, and you can link to their sites directly from the gallery and even purchase some of their pieces on our website. You can listen to the episodes and check out the source materials in the Lamia Library. In addition to all that good stuff on the website, you can subscribe to our newsletter, The Oracle. The bi-weekly Oracle is going to be my winter solstice gift to you. It will launch with an extra special newsletter on Friday, December 20th, featuring a surprise downloadable gift that won't be available in later newsletters. So sign up now.
As I've mentioned in previous episodes, the first man was formed of clay, and he really isn't very interesting. But the first woman, Pandora, is a whole different story. You see, Zeus felt threatened by the man's existence. Maybe he was upset that the titan Prometheus and the goddess Athena had created a creature more complex and similar to the gods than Zeus had ever created. He definitely felt threatened when Prometheus taught the man how to create sparks and fire. And to retaliate, Zeus chained Prometheus to a rock for hundreds of years and made vultures eat his gut out of his living body each day. Since titans are immortal, Prometheus' organs regenerated each night, and he relived the same torture over and over again. Athena, the goddess of war, strategy, and wisdom, was not punished at first for her participation. As the goddess of wisdom, Athena had given humanity something more than just animation when she gave them life. She gave them curiosity as well. For curiosity leads to questions, tests, discoveries, innovation, growth, knowledge, and ultimately, wisdom, Athena's greatest gift. In a moment of unusual clarity and sharpness, Zeus devised a way to punish Athena through her own generosity, but it would take time and patience and an elaborate scheme. Prometheus and Athena had begun the golden age of man. Men could now form tools, build homes and temples, farm and hunt, and grow families. The population flourished and grew rapidly. But Zeus cared nothing for the men and women now creating order and prosperity on Earth. So he started working on part two of his revenge plan. He ordered Hephaestus to create a woman, and commanded that all the gods of the council give the woman a gift. Athena taught the woman to weave, Aphrodite gave the woman grace, Hermes gave her the power of speech, and Zeus gave her a sealed pithos, or pot, which we now know as Pandora's box. Zeus told her the pot contained additional gifts, but that she was never to open it. Then, like a piece of property, Zeus gifted Pandora herself to Prometheus's brother to be his wife. She was so beautiful that Epimetheus, even though he had been warned not to accept gifts from the gods by his brother Prometheus, accepted Pandora and married her. They appear to have begun happily enough. Pandora had a daughter, Pyrrha, who grew up and married as well to one of man's descendants. Epimetheus was a minor titan with few powers, but certainly enough to keep his family in comfort and safety. Unfortunately for Pandora, she was a mouse caught in a trap. The curiosity of human nature formed by Athena to make us wise enough to survive and evolve in a world full of dangerous creatures and weather and illness was working on Pandora's mind. Zeus had given her a pot that he promised was filled with blessings from the gods and then made her promise not to open it. But why? Wouldn't gifts from the gods be good? like the gifts that they had given her when she was formed? What if she was hurting or depriving her family or neighbors or loved ones by ignoring the gift from Zeus? What if her daughter got sick and the only solution was in the pot? Shouldn't she know what was in there simply so that she could be prepared in case a need arose? Finally, after years of blind obedience, Pandora unsealed the pot just to take a peek at the generous gifts from her benevolent god. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> we can only imagine the evil chuckle and the fingers coming together as Zeus watched in anticipation, his cunning plan finally coming to fruition. And out of the pot flew pestilence, disease, and despair of all kinds. Pandora quickly closed the pot, horrified by what had been released but it was too late. Zeus had used Athena's gift against her, crippling the humanity she had helped create through their own curiosity, her greatest gift. And as pestilence, plague, and worse began to spread, the golden age began to fade, and the existence of mankind became a race of survival that it still is today. There have been so many retellings and adaptations and books and theses and plays of Pandora's story throughout several thousand years. In some, 
Hope is also in the box and remains hidden there on Zeus's orders, further crippling mankind. In others, Hope emerges and negotiates on behalf of Pandora against a punishment from Zeus. The story, of course, parallels to the original woman of Christianity, Eve, and her apple, and the two women have been compared and contrasted many times over the years. Today's episode is brought to you by Honestly Essential Oils. Unlike the Essential Oil Barons, Honestly Essential Oils is a small, family-run company with fewer employees than I have fingers. And no soccer moms are pushing their product, just me. Because Honestly Essential Oils doesn't have to pay a long line of salespeople before the oils ever reach you, their oils are far less expensive than other companies. Plus, Honestly Essential Oils are sourced and tested to ensure high quality oils in every bottle. Honestly Essential Oils is run by my awesome in-laws and I use these oils for everything from cleaning to massages to rituals and meditation to soothing minor skin ailments. Our eucalyptus, which I need to dribble in a bath today because I have a cold, lavender, which I dab onto my wrists and temples to relax before bed, and of course tea tree oil, which is an essential part of my all-natural cleaning sprays and it helps to soothe and speed the healing process for many minor skin irritants. You can try out Honestly Essential Oils for yourself and get 10% off when you use the promo code WITCHES at checkout. So go to honestlyessential.com to get pure oils, oil blends, and even kits and use the promo code WITCHES at checkout for that 10% off. Pandora parallels to more women than just Eve. The first woman in Greek mythology and Monica Lewinsky, a modern woman of our time and culture, share something profoundly disturbing in common. Both women were the lesser harm in a plot devised and acted out by the most powerful man in their world. And yet both women bear the brunt of the blame, not only for the small part or action that they played, but for the crimes and sins of the men who acted out their fantasies or vengeance by preying upon these women. This parallel is everywhere once you notice it. In fact, it's an actual named phenomenon in our world today, commonly called the glass cliff. Using the glass cliff scenario, we begin to identify that women are often selected as CEOs of companies that the board already knows are doomed to fail, so that they take the brunt of the failure. Women are also overwhelmingly selected to run for political offices by their party when the party sees the seat as unwinnable anyways, while men are overwhelmingly nominated for seats with much greater chances of being elected. One recent example is that of Theresa May, former Prime Minister of England, put into power right after the impossible to negotiate and dangerously foolish Brexit had passed the popular vote. May had very little time to negotiate a peaceful breakaway from the EU that wouldn't cripple the British economy. <clears throat> the consensus by outside economists and political scientists is that this is impossible in the allotted time frame and foolish in any time frame. And of course, May hit dead ends at every turn and suggestion until she resigned, practically in tears. And then I watched as so many people, in the pernicious way we've been acculturated to do, blamed the entire Brexit disaster on May, rather than on, say, Boris Johnson, the man who ran false ads throughout the Brexit campaign, or the voters who chose fear of immigrants over international cooperation, or the members of parliament who refused to work with May on her solutions, instead creating more problems for her. Which is, we need to be better. We need to recognize the glass cliff that has existed since Pandora was given her pot, and we need to stop blaming our sisters and start looking at the bigger picture.
After this bleak episode, today's ritual is designed to bring hope, the one element left to Pandora when all else escaped. To perform this ritual, choose an invigorating essential oil that you love and dab it onto your temples. I personally prefer the clove bud scent or the jasmine scent. And then sit on the ground cross-legged. Place your hands on the floor, close your eyes and imagine you are sitting in the woods or on a beach, the hands connecting you to the earth like roots. And then tell yourself, I can do it. I am strong as the earth, bright as the sun, unmovable as the mountains. And spend a few moments meditating, enjoying the scent you've chosen and your moment of peace and quiet. Thank you for listening today. If you've enjoyed the episode, please, please, please leave us a magical review so others can find and enjoy the show as well. Check out our website for the mystically amazing merchandise, the Grimoire Gallery, and the Lamia Library where you can check our sources because fake news is just for losers and presidents. Most importantly, subscribe to The Oracle as the first newsletter will have a special surprise gift included and you don't want to miss it. That's a wrap today. Stay fierce, witches, and we'll catch you next time. Of Witches and Women is brought to you by SHH Media, LLC.